Hello and welcome everyone to the uh, Clones Cup. Of course, our 32 teams reduced down to 16 sides after the first round. This is now the second round of the Clones Cup. Our first matchup today, Glenn Maxwell taking on Ben Stokes of England. This is in the all-rounders bracket. Uh, these are the last two remaining uh, all-rounder, modern all-rounders, I suppose. After this, uh, you'll be facing off against a legend. So this is the last round where we see uh, the best of each era facing off against each other before they will face off the best of another era uh, in their certain positions. And then the round after that is when they face off against the best of another position. So, of course, the second round, very important round here for both these sides. There's a wicket straight away. Well, not really straight away. It's five, five balls in the innings. It's taken, taken five deliveries, but he's chopped it on, I think. It might have been chopped on. It might have been just straight onto the stumps. It didn't really seem like there was too much bat involved, but Stokes losing an early wicket. One for four at the end of the first over. Actually, not the end of the first over. There's a ball to come. And he's put this one in the air, and there's a fielder down there. Can't take the catch on the full. Fielded it pretty quickly, and almost a run-out chance, but uh, they end up with stick. Six from that opening over, so run a ball. Maxwell will be loving if there's another wicket. This one almost straight to the fielder. Another wicket for Team Maxwell. Ben Stokes' side of Ben Stokes, Ben Stokes, Ben Stokes, Ben Stokes. There's 11 of them, if you didn't know. But they're all out for six. So one shot wins the game for Team Maxwell. And Ben Stokes' team, going to need two wickets. It's the only way you survive. And that's a four from the first ball. Or is it? No, it's not. It's going to be two. Should have gone to the boundary, but it didn't quite get there. So a couple to begin for Team Maxwell. Since Justin... Hey, Eddie Nibbles there on the pitch. Oh my god, I'm yawning. Yawning at the beginning of the content video. You can tell I've been up all night trying to put these together. That one just tucked away. Oh, just driven onto the offside. No run there. It's a long process, okay? <laughs> it's a very long process. Uh, five from ten. Goes over towards extra cover. There's a fielder down there. They thought about two, just set up for one. So four more needed for victory now. Still nine balls remaining. Good thing for Maxwell's obviously it is just uh, one shot to win the game. This Maxwell yet to face a delivery. And just leaves that one. Because it's a wide. You can, <laughs> Look, I get it. You're trying to get a wicket here. But you don't have runs to play with, Stokes. You have three runs in the bank. Nine balls for Maxwell to get him. He goes down the ground over the offside. That's four runs. And Team Maxwell becomes the first side to progress through to the semi-finals of the 2-2 Clones Cup. Of course, we are sort of skimming through a lot of these matches uh, in the early stages. Once we get through to the latter stages of the round, you'll be seeing a, sort of a, really almost a full 2-2 match in its entirety. But it's Team Maxwell winning by two wickets, sending him through to the uh, quarterfinals, actually, where he will face the winner of, I think it's Team Flintoff versus Team Richie. So we'll see that uh, a little bit later on. Team Maxwell through to the quarterfinals. And here is that match where we will decide who the opponent for Team Maxwell is. A wicket for Team Richie as Flintoff requires a further 14 from seven deliveries, there's a little inside edge onto the stumps. Good delivery. Good wicket in the end. So Richie, after Flintoff scored 12 from the first four deliveries, which he's put up a wicket. Switch hit. Oh, was there an edge there? Just had a drop chance. Anyway, 14 needed from the last over for Flintoff. Oh, my Richie Benno. Mr. 2-2-2 two, two, two himself. And needs to defend 14 runs from the next five balls. Goes over the covers. Four runs. Beautiful shot there from Flintoff. Admiring his own work. There you go. That absolutely smashed over cover. Marvellous stroke. 
This time again, it's even bigger. It's six, the short boundary out there, just 64 metres. Doesn't need to be a massive hit. And it goes all the way for six. So Flintoff now, turn this game around. The last two deliveries, there's been 10 runs from it. Just needs a further four from the last three. This one at hampering through for a single. So it's three from two. Oh, really floating it up there. And they find a way through the field. Everyone in. They need three runs. They've picked up two. Turning and coming back for the third. They're going to get there. Team Flintoff going to progress through to the quarterfinals with a matchup against Team Maxwell incoming. Richie, the game's over, mate. No, no need to make any more field adjustments. Team Flintoff win by a wicket. We've got our two all-rounders through to the quarterfinals. Glenn Maxwell and... Uh, who was that? Andrew Flintoff. We cross over now to our other second round matchup between the batting. This is Bradman and Lara, and Bradman almost <laughs> clears the fence with two balls to go. Scores are level, of course. And we end up with one ball to come. One run for a Bradman victory. One run for a. Oh no, one wicket. For a super over. Lara has to defend it. At the moment it's 1 for 23. Scores all tied up. Is there one ball to go? Maybe there's two balls to go. Maybe there's two balls to defend. For Lara. Yes, there is two balls to defend. They did cross there. So the informed Bradman on strike. Field is now well and truly in. And Bradman goes over the top. With a big six. Sends himself through. To the quarterfinals. He'll play the winner of Steve Smith and Virat Kohli. Which will be a little bit later on today. But the Don. Progresses through to the quarterfinals. Of our 2-2 Cup. Our next matchup we're going to look at today. Is the swing bowling of Wazim Akram. Taking on the spin bowling of Shane Warne. In the battle of our legend bowlers. This is our first bowling matchup of the second round. Edge and taken by the keeper. Oh, certainly thought there was a noise there. The umpire's given this not out. Surely review coming. Yes, review has come. Oh, yeah, definite snicko there. Surely you overturn it. The decision has been overturned. Warren loses an early wicket. And Wazim gets it one for one. Yep. Slicing that away to third man there, Warney. Now, Warren could almost be considered an all-rounder given he batted reasonably well, but this is an edge and another wicket taken. So, Warren all out for two. Team Wazim ready to go. And it only took him four deliveries to get the job done as Wazim Akram progresses through to the quarterfinals. He'll face the winner of Bumrah and Rabada a little later on today. But a big win for Team Wazim Akram, knocking out Shane Warne. What about the wicket keepers? We go over to their corner of the world, where it's Mark Boucher taking on Brendan McCullum. Boucher requiring 15 from the final over. Starts it off with a boundary. Makes it 11 from 5 needed now. Of course, this matchup will determine who is the greatest legendary keeper. Is McCullum fully retired? I feel like he probably is. Another four for a Boucher as well. I think McCullum is like fully, fully retired. Surely. Surely. Anyway, Boucher is uh, really putting up a fight here in this second over. Got himself a couple of fours and has reduced the lead of McCullum. What have we got? Seven needed from four balls. A couple of boundaries, as we said, to start off this final over. None for 23. Pretty big chase. This one required... 29, obviously McCullum's score. And another four for Boucher. So three fours starting off this over. The field hasn't been right. The bowling has been too straight. And Boucher's been able to work everything over the onside. Three from three now. Oh, little edge. McCullum would have loved a wicket there. Would have just added a bit of bonus pressure. But right now, there's still a big mid-wicket gap. You can see trying to just defend... Runs here, McCullum. Got to be outside off. That's too straight. And it's into the gap. And it's going to be four. And Mark Boucher 
progresses through to the quarterfinals after beating both Gilchrist and McCullum. Arguably one of the big surprise packets of the tournament. So Boucher through all the legendary wicket keepers. Wonder who his opponent will be. Let's cross over to our next match and find out who else will book themselves a place in the semi-finals. It's the bowlers this time, Boomer and Rabada. Boomer winning the toss, selecting the bat first. Interesting decision. And he's hit it straight down the throat of cover. Good catch from Rabada, running back with the flight. Gets an early wicket as Boomer won for none. We get to see a side actually knocked over for zero. Oh, what is going on there? That is a run out. That is an absolute brain fade. I've got no idea what's happened here. Absolutely none. Rabada throws it to the keeper. Boomer decides to take off for no reason whatsoever. And with that absolute brain fade of a decision from Jasper Boomer up, they're all out for just one. So Rabada, not far off booking a spot in the semi-final. Just two runs required for victory. This one tucked away down a fine leg. One run. And that'll level the scores. So plenty of balls to win the game. It only takes one shot down towards cover. It's a boundary. It's a Rabada win. Rabada through to the quarterfinals. We'll face off. Who will they face off against? Do we know that yet? I feel like we probably do. We probably know who he's facing off against, but I can't remember for the life of me. Oh, dear. Oh, Wazim Akram, that's right. He's facing Wazim Akram. Meanwhile, on the other batting side of things, Team Smith won the toss, wanted a bat first as well against Team Coley. Interesting choice. Seen the side batting first win a couple of times. But majority of the time, if you bowl first, you win a game of 2-2 cricket. So lots of pressure on Smith to get runs on the board here. Goes over the top of cover. They will pick up two thanks to a misfield. So a little bit of luck there for the Smiths. Almost a half volley there that's been put away through cover for four more. And again, this time through mid-wicket, not quite through the gap, just the one. Actually, not even not even a one. There was a misfield, but they didn't run. Strange. So Smith already on 11. They'll be looking for a 20-plus score. This one cut beautifully between point and third man for another boundary. Score up to 15 now. That's over the top again. And it's four more. Scoreboard up to 19 runs. Three balls left. And anything mid-20s we know is always difficult to chase down. This one worked through the leg side. Should be one. One of the second. Didn't take it. Up to 20 now with one ball to go. Does he get it over the top and in the gap? Yes, he does. So 24, the score for Smith. 25 required for Coley to find a spot in the semi-finals. It's going to be an interesting one. Look at that umpire limbering up there. He's getting ready to bowl as well as Steve Smith will look to book uh, a position in the semi-finals. Needs to restrict Coley to 23 or less with uh, 11 balls remaining. Probably go on the reverse for a couple dots to start. This is good pressure from Smith. Just be building the pressure, but Coley relieves it with a beautiful stroke over cover for four. This time again down the ground, just a single. So Coley still needs a further 20 runs, just seven balls remaining. This one high down the ground. Has it got the distance on it? Man underneath it. Catch is taken. Wicked falls at the end of the first over. And Team Coley lose their first wicket. It's 
And a one for five after the first over. So a brilliant over from Smith. It's going to need to be picture perfect from Coley in the second over. 20 required from the final six deliveries. Oh, that's a good, good ball. But played well. Man on the rope. Has he taken it inside the field of play? He has. It is given. So Steve Smith and his side win out over Team Coley. Gee, you can't tell from that angle whether or not he pressed the rope. I would like to have a look on the on the replay screen, but we can't do that in 2-2 cricket. There are no DRS, no replays. Oh, actually, there are DRS. Pretty sure. But Team Smith through to the quarterfinals as we move on to our final matchup of the day. Doney with a scoop over the top for four. Of course, this matchup, MS Doney taking on Josh Butler in the Battle of the Modern Wicket Keepers. Doney, obviously, the king of chasing. How will he go putting a score on the board? Butler winning the toss, electing the bowl. And Doney finds the gap. So that's four through the cover. So we're yet to see like a really massive uh, score here. That's a big full toss. Deserves to be punished. And it is. As I said, we're yet to see a massive score. I think the highest score we've seen is 29. I've seen it uh, scored twice. And chased down twice as well. Which is uh, quite interesting. That the two times we have had high scores, that it's uh, they've been chased down. You would have thought that those scores uh, would have been defended, if anything. Sort of those tricky early 20s, even high teens that are the tough targets to get. Stoney continues to power these shots through. It's another boundary. Beautiful shot. But this is turning into a big score as well. One ball to come, already 22 runs. So this is where we get into that real tricky total category. And a dot ball to finish it off. So 22 is what Doney ends up with. It's going to need to be a good chase from Joss Butler and his side. 23 needed from 12. Oh, a little inside edge onto the pad. As the keeper fields it. Keeps it to one. Down the ground. It's high. Is it long? There's a fielder there, but it's over his head and it's six. So a good early boundary and a bit of confidence for Team Butler. Oh, how is that Mr. Stumps? So bottom edge just misses the stumps. And don't he be fuming that that was not a wicket. Butler goes high over the top again. Another four runs. And already has created 11 runs from this opening five deliveries. Make that 12 runs. Make that 13 runs from the first over. So 10 needed from the last over to see Butler progress. And Doney needs to defend. And a big boundary to begin this last over. It's going to make it tough. It's down to one shot to win the game for Butler. Doney must defend the next five balls. Yep. Kept the first one to a dot. This one now just to one. So five from three. Yep. Over the top. And it's four again. So it's one from two. The score's all tied up. Team Butler... One run away from progressing through to the quarterfinals and pulled and through. And it is Butler, Joss Butler, of course, progressing through to the quarterfinals of our 2 2 World Cup, Clones Cup, whatever you want to call it. There's just eight teams left. So let's take a look at how it looks in the wicket keepers there. Obviously, Butler with a win over MS Doney will face Mark Boucher, who's been the surprise package of the tournament, taking out Gilchrist and McCullum. For the bowlers, Wazim Akram is through, as well as Kagiso Rabada. 
through to the quarterfinals in what will be a great battle of the quick bowlers to see who gets a spot in the semis. Meanwhile, in the other side of things, what have we got going on with the batsmen and the all-rounders? Uh, we'll see at least one Australian through to the semi-final. Don Bradman will take on Stephen Smith. And for the uh, all-rounder side of things, it is Glenn Maxwell and Andrew Flintoff to face off. An exciting uh, quarterfinal round coming up. See you guys tomorrow with all the quarterfinal action. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.